Welcome back to Pickleball Journey. Today we are bringing you the top 10 do's and don'ts for pickleball. My name's Elisha. I'm Justin. Let's get into it. All right, so the 10th thing is a do, and I want you to make sure you're returning, you're hitting dinks at the kitchen line to the weaknesses of your opponents. So whether that's the weaker player or weaker side, like a backhand of their shot or forehand, make sure you're hitting your returns, your dinks, your drives, whatever you're hitting to the weaker side and the weaker shot. Um, setting yourself up, setting your partner up to be able to put the ball away. A lot of times we don't think about this, we don't target those spots, and we just hit wherever, whatever's convenient for us. Start thinking about those spots and those weaknesses that you see more errors from your opponent on and exploiting those as you play rec games and tournament play. Number nine is don't get too fancy with your serve. So too often we see players at the 3-0 to 4-0 level trying to hit really hard serves or trying to hit too much spin. And maybe you've seen Elisha and myself teach on this where we are hitting spin and we are trying to hit hard. But one thing, if you watch us in a game, we'll start off hitting hard to test out our opponent's return. If we're getting free points, we'll continue to do it because it's worth the risk of going for it. But as soon as we realize that our opponents are handling that, that serve fine and they're making all of their returns, we're dialing it back and we're keeping to that tip of don't be too fancy. So then we just get the ball in, start the point off, Number eight, make sure you do follow the ball. So when we say follow the ball, we mean with everything. So if I'm back here hitting a drop, I'm following the ball in to the kitchen line. Um, with my eyes, if I'm at the kitchen line, I'm following the ball with my eyes constantly. And then also my paddle. My paddle is following the ball wherever it goes and my weight, my weight shifts with the ball as well, making sure that I'm shifting side to side, whatever side it goes. So if the ball, if my partner hits a ball out wide, I shift over with the ball. If, he, if I hit a ball at an angle, I'm shifting towards the center. So make sure you're following the ball with your eyes, with your paddle, with your weight, and with your movement. All of these things in your rec game or your tournament play. Number seven is do be willing to back up. So too often we see people, they're on that kitchen line and maybe they've heard from someone, don't give up any ground. So they're here and they pop the ball up and they just stay here. We do wanna be willing to move back if we pop the ball up because now we're on defense. So you pop the ball up right when you do, recognize it and take a few steps back. Now, once we're in this spot, you know, we wanna, we wanna be having our weight shifted forward. We don't wanna be hitting the ball as we're moving back. So think, get back as quick as you, quick as you can, and then be set there. Now, we're, we're moving back, but then our, our end goal is to get back up to the kitchen line. So we wanna do this when we hit the ball back at their feet. Now that, now that we've reset the ball, we're more in a neutral position in the point, now we can move back up to the kitchen line, regain that spot, and hopefully go on offense to win the point. Number six is a do not. Make sure that when you're playing pickleball, trying to uh, evolve a point or progress into a point, that you don't attack too early. A lot of times I see this right off the bat, they'll hit a serve, they get a return, they tack right away. Or they get up to the kitchen line, they've established themselves, and all of a sudden they attack right away, and they're very predictable. They just, people see them as the attackers, and now, you're just, now you're, the opponents are just ready to put it right back at your feet every time. Instead, make sure you're patient. Mix in softer shots, dinks, drops, things like that, that hide your attack so that when you do attack, it's a surprise to the person and they mess up or give you a high ball to be able to put the ball away. Real quick, there's still 83% of you who are not subscribed to the channel. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. Number five is a don't. We wanna make sure that we don't stand too straight and in, in this like soldier position when we're dinking. So, what we wanna do instead is we wanna get, get in athletic, our knees slightly bent in a lower stance because too often when you're standing straight, it's tougher to hit these balls that are at your feet. You can tend to lean too much with your back, which can, can cause back pain. Uh, also, any ball that you're trying to pick up off the bounce and, and reach for, 
you're gonna have a lot more balance when you're in a, a more of a, you know, a lower center of gravity position versus standing straight and hitting these balls. We're on number four of 10 do's and don'ts. We want you to do hit the ball nice and high and deep on the returns. I've um, trained at, with a lot of people that are a little bit slower to the kitchen line. And I didn't realize how impactful the time you get to make sure you're hitting that return high to be able to get to that kitchen line. A lot of times, uh, Justin and I, we just hit the ball low and deep and, and hard because we're quick enough to that kitchen line. But if you're a little bit slower, you can't be as quick to that kitchen line, make sure you're getting it really high over the net because they're two bounce rule. They have to let it bounce really high over the net, deep in the court. So you can, I've even tried it. I could even walk to the kitchen line and be there in time by the time they hit the ball. So make sure that you're hitting the ball high and deep in the court when you're hitting your return to serve. Number three is that we do want to be more aware where the ball's at. So oftentimes we see this at a lot of levels is people are not thinking about where the height of the ball is and they're just hitting any ball that they see coming near them. So we want to think, we've talked about this before, shoulder high, let it fly. Most of the time when people are hitting hard balls and they're coming shoulder level, those balls are going out. So work on that, be aware of that. Uh, if it's coming softer, obviously you want to hit that. That's an easy put away, hit it down at their feet. Now, another spot we want to be aware of is when we're back in the middle of the court. So a lot of times we get to this spot after we've hit a shot and we're coming in, maybe it's our third shot, maybe it's just third shot drop or drive, but we're in this position here. If the ball's coming back to us fairly hard, if it's at waist high, usually let that fly, that's going out. So do be more aware where the ball's at, whether you're hitting those or you're letting those go out, because we don't want to have the point go on longer than it needs to. Number two is a do. Make sure that you do have margin for error over the net. The net is our first enemy when it comes to pickleball. It's the first thing that gets in our way to winning. So make sure that we're having that margin, we're having that height over the net, so we get the ball in play. If we don't get the ball in play, we can't win. So start with a good margin, three feet, four feet, however much you can. And once we get consistent in that, we progress to making the margin lower, but start with a high margin so we get consistent at that, we get confident, then lower your margin after that. We are now to the number one, and this one is a do. So we wanna make sure we do hit to our opponent's feet at any chance we can. So whether they're at the kitchen line, <clears throat> we're trying to hit to their feet there, whether they're, they're deep at the baseline, we wanna get it back at their feet. But one key thing you wanna think about, and a lot of players miss this, is notice where your opponent is moving to. So we don't wanna to hit to where they've been or where they're at currently, but we wanna to hit to where they're going to be. So if I'm at, if my opponent's at the baseline like this, and they're moving forward, I don't wanna to hit to where they were starting, but I wanna hit a couple feet in front of them to catch where they're going to be and get it at their feet. Otherwise, if I hit it to where they were, it's gonna be right you know, in a sweet spot for them versus right at their feet. As we know, everyone's playing a ton of pickleball and wearing through their shoes way too fast. If you do need shoes, be sure to check out Frameth. There's a 10% discount in the description. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to Engage for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the link in the description if you want 20% off any Engage paddle.